So whenever it comes to box cutter, the shapes has always been located in this area of the top bar. And then we've tried to streamline it through the pie menu by allowing users to quickly change their shape on the fly. However, now inside of the D helper, we see that all the shapes are listed along the side. And really, in my opinion, I feel the best way to experience the shapes in box cutter is alt scrolling. Basically holding alt and scrolling will allow you to jump through any shape you want on the fly. In fact, that is the first hotkey we'll be discussing. So now I'm drawing a box. However, this box is tapered. So we'll uncheck persistent and click the X to remove the tapering inside of this mini helper. But box is the first one. If we alt scroll, we could jump to line box, the second shape. The thing about line box is you're able to basically draw a line in any direction and then from there it turns itself into a box. So the idea behind it was to be able to get a line that's really useful whenever it comes to drawing angles. So with this bevel enabled, we're just gonna press D and click on the reverse bevel or click on the Q bevel icon. And now that there's a second bevel, we're just gonna choose to reverse it. And now we have a reverse bevel, we'll just click to apply. Let's alt scroll and we'll jump to the next shape. Wedge is one of my favorite shapes. If we hold control, we can jump off of this dot and bring down a wedge. By holding control, we can actually draw a perfect wedge that will snap to a 90 degree angle. And from here, we can alt scroll to the next shape. Custom is capable of using itself as a custom cutter. However, we'll be talking about that more in depth later. But the main thing about this shape is that you can hold shift whenever you're drawing it to actually get an equidistant draw. And whenever you're extruding it, you can hold control in order to snap it one-to-one. -one. So the goal is to get it away from shift to live, but there are one-to-one -one solutions available with custom as well. So we've expanded on it with auto depth and stuff in the past. So if we press D, we see that laser cut is an option. However, if we toggle this option at the end, we actually enable auto depth, which means that there's also the option for custom one-to-one -one on auto depth, now part of the D helper. So this means that if I just click and drag, we're just creating this custom cutter to depth. And that's one of my favorite shapes inside of box cutter, but I've always wanted to expand on the one-to-one -one behavior to make it feel a lot more custom and a lot more fitting, definitely more unique than box. However, right now, it is still in the shadow of box, but we'll see how it progresses as time goes on. We'll hold Alt and we'll jump over to Ngon Line. Ngon Line is basically a line in the form of Ngon. So you can just draw a line. You can press backspace on your points to go back to a previous one. If we weren't working on this D helper, we would be adding the ability to bevel individual points, but stay tuned, you'll be seeing it in a future version. By pressing E, we can jump to extrusion. However, let's actually take this extrusion back all the way to the top, and if we use the D helper, we can actually just expand on the extrusion as far as the Z depth goes, as far as dimensions is, and not have to worry about going through and actually pressing any hotkeys. So we're also able to deal with the extrusion phase in the helper. So if we click and apply, that's basically in gone line in a nutshell. The next one is lasso. So lasso is one of my favorites. However, I don't get a lot of chances to talk about it, but just by being able to click and drag, we're able to draw an equidistant line and then we can just click and drag this dot in order to extrude, which can be useful for getting really nice freehand strokes. I still feel that there's a hard surface journey that this is able to go through to be taken truly to the next level. If we alt scroll again, we can jump up to star, which is a variant of circle. This was added as of the last release. And right now we see that our star is set to 64 vertices. That's actually too many. Let's press D and change that to something like six. And whenever we draw a star, we actually get something a little more uh, a little more sensical instead of nonsensical. Let's right click, cancel that. We'll press D and we want to turn off auto depth because you know auto depth was just 40 inches of talking with custom, but auto depth does support all shapes, but we'll be going into that more in depth later. If we extrude it down, we could just press tab and pause it. We could press D, go in our helper. We could choose to taper it if we want. We could jump between the presets one is actually the preset to remove it, so keep that in mind. Clicking one will just remove taper because no taper is basically one. But we can get in here and actually adjust our values to get something a little more customized, even play with our dimension Z, which dimensions looks different for circle because circle doesn't need X and Y. 
if you do need X and Y for circle, you can expand the dimensions, but typically circle has been simplified to diameter to allow users to input specifically the num numerical value that they want when it comes to circular objects. So let's just click and we have finished this. Let's alt scroll, we jump up to the next shape and that is circle. Circle has went through quite a few changes. As of Canon, default circle is now polygon circle and modifier circle is circle M. So if you see circle M, that means that you're using the classic modifier based circle. This isn't capable of reverse bevel, which is more than likely why you want to be using polygon circle. But we added the enum for changing it on, on the fly in front of users for them to be able to quickly get to whatever type of circle they desire. However, for this, we'll be keeping it on polygon. And let's set our segments to something like 32. And if we click and drag, we can create our circle. And the best part about circle in this update is that by pressing D, we can go in and adjust our bevel just by moving the mouse, get the amount of segments that we want, press tap to pause, press D, and we see that the bevel offers us options for basically flipping the shape, which gives us a reverse bevel. We can adjust the width, and even better than that, we can unclamp the bevel whenever we're doing a reverse bevel in order to get results that are just really not supposed to happen whenever it comes to the bevel modifier by breaking the clamp. The last thing to do is to add reverse bevel to Ingon and Lasso, but we'll be dealing with that at a later time. But with that, we have went through a guided tour of basically all of the shapes available whenever you alt scroll and box cutter. And the thing is, is that while I showed you how alt scrolling is the best way to go through the best of what box cutter has to offer as far as the tools are, Concern when it comes to um, going through the different shapes. If we press D, we see that these options are lining the side. So we can do the same thing. We can go inside of circle, we could change it to polygon, and now we're drawing a polygon circle. We could change it to star, lower our segments, and we're able to do it just all inside of this easy nifty strip. In fact, most of the time, you shouldn't even have to expand it out, but we do offer expanded preps, which we'll be expanding on multifold over the next releases. I mean, I see a plethora of things that has to be done in order to take this thing truly to the final level, but I'm so proud of the work that has gone into it. But just like that, we can get in and just change our shapes on the fly. We can quickly make it a line shape for circle. There's also the ability to draw line circles, not saying that you should do it, but in the event that you want to draw a circle, just like you would a line box or even draw a custom shape, just like you would a line box, you're able to do that inside of this little mini helper. So the goal is to definitely give you the best of everything and pretty much access to everything available inside of box cutter as far as these shapes are concerned, all inside of this mini helper. In fact, if we click on box and we click on grid, we're now drawing a grid shape. We can click and drag and we're drawing a grid. We can press tab and pause this. We can press D and we see that this grid that we drew also has solidification, meaning that we can expand on the solidification by clicking and dragging in order to make it even thicker. We can adjust our divisions on the fly. And the best part of it all is that we can just click X and just remove grid. Grid has solidify attached to it, so removing grid is going to remove solidify. But if I want solidify back, then that brings us to the next point where we're going to be talking about modifiers. So 